Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Phoenix, Arizona, it's time for Phoenix Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Hello and welcome to Phoenix Business Radio, broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studio inside Max 6 Conscious Workspace in Tempe, Arizona, where we help build businesses and connect you with the right people. I'm your host and Phoenix Business Radio studio partner, Karen Nowicki, and I'm very excited to have today, Insperity is in the house. Yay. We have Don Alex, is that how I pronounce your last That's name? Yep. The district manager. And we are going to talk all things Insperity and PEO today. So please, if you will, Don, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background and how you landed with this company. Okay. Well, my name is Don Alex, and I have been in Arizona for a little over 31 years, originally from New Jersey. And I started with Insperity probably in around 2012 in sales and have been the district manager for the last five years. And the district is what, Arizona? Is it beyond the Arizona walls? How Arizona and New Mexico, but mostly um, Arizona. And you are not born and raised in Arizona. We just discussed that before we came on air. You are from New Jersey originally? Correct. And did you seek warmer weather? What was the goal to come out to Arizona? How did you land here? Well, it was really based around college. So I had um, several options that I had back east, and I just finally talked to my mom and dad and said, I think I want to try something new. So that's how we wound up in Arizona. Yeah, and you said your wife and you live in uh, Scottsdale area? Yeah, D.C. Yeah, Ranch. very good. Well, we're so pleased to have you to, uh, here with us today. Tell us, who is Insperity? Insperity is a professional employer organization, or PEO, uh, based in suburb of Houston, Texas, called Kingwood. Uh, established in 1986, public in 1995. And we help a little bit over 100,000 small and medium-sized businesses across the country. What does that entail? So a PEO is a professional employee organization. Right. What do you cover? Well, if you think about small businesses and all the things that they have to do for their employees, regardless of what their value proposition is, small business owners get into business to deliver a certain product or service. And the day that they hire their first employee, they're also an employer. So all things pay related, worker comp related, healthcare benefit related, maybe retirement services training and development, performance management, all those things that go into attracting, retaining, motivating, developing, and rewarding employees. And you said you've been with them for since 2012? About, yes. And started in sales. Correct. So how, sometimes I, when people uh, land in management, they say they're kind of the accidental manager and they did so well in whatever position they had that they said, hey, we want you to lead the team. Was that the right, case right. for you? Well, I'd always been in sales. I had a, my own business started in 95 in the finance business. I did read that. So I started that with a good buddy of mine from college and ran that for about 11 years and sold it in 2006 and was introduced to Insperity through mutual friends. And I had always considered myself a salesperson or a business development type person. So when I found the company and I saw how mission driven they were, it was just a good marriage for us. And, and I started in sales and thought I would be doing that for the rest of my life. So like a lot of things in life, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> and he's going to change them. He, he's going to do that for sure. And he did that with me and, and always has. Um, and the opportunity came up to be a leader in the company and I was thrilled to do it. And it's been about five years since. So great. And it's still sales, right? If you're not, if you're not selling, uh, you know, the product and the services, you're really selling with your team and, and getting them rallied and, and encouraged, encouraged, that sort of thing. Of course. I mean, leadership is really about helping develop other people to their uh, fullest and best use, right? Mm -hmm. So um, there's always amount of selling in that, whether it's sometimes you believe in them more than they believe in themselves and it's kind of managing them up and helping them. But it's still on a daily basis involves meeting with potential clients or prospects and helping them work through and navigate the challenges that they go through as a small business owner and helping them any way that we can. Well, we certainly have seen a change, right, given quarantine and COVID and, and just all of that. How have uh, how can working with a PEO help business owners as it specifically relates to COVID and the pandemic? Well, before COVID, when we would meet with small business owners, we would cover sometimes the three A's is what we call them, which is things that they want to avoid in their business, things that they maybe want to adjust, mm. and then things they want to achieve. And we changed that a little bit for COVID, and it turned into the three R's, which were rescue, recover, and rebuild. So in the PEO relationship, 
um, as this challenge came up, like many other small business challenges that can come up, they could use us as a um, third party to use um, the best practices in HR to kind of help keep their people on track. Because regardless of what the challenge is, they still have a value proposition. They still have clients that they need to take care of. And they still have employees that they need to motivate. So it's been very, very, um, it's been a very busy time for us to say the least for our service people, whether it's helping them prepare the documents for the PPP loan, or maybe now putting the policies that they need um, in place for remote work, or maybe uh, getting back into the office in a safe and manageable way. And you're a one-stop shop. I would imagine there are some small businesses who aren't familiar with Insperity uh, or even PEO, for that matter, would go and and find someone to help them here and here and have a bunch of different people and organizations are helping them, consultants, and none of them are really connecting. Is that one of the benefits of working with Insperity, that it, it, it's a one-stop shop? Uh, it can be. I, I can tell you my experience in my business, I added things as I could afford them or as my wife told me that I needed them. That makes sense. Like healthcare benefits or retirement services or professional payroll services. So it's a services. grow with you. It's a grow with your business opportunity. Many times small businesses reach a pain point and it causes them to reach out to us either through a reference or a referral or they overhear a conversation that's going well that we're having with some potential clients. And we believe very um, wholeheartedly in diagnosing before we prescribe. Mm. So we do a discovery call with them take a look at what they're doing with their business right now and do what we call providing hope, showing them maybe another way to do it. And your uh, company is countrywide. I know you mentioned that they are the main offices in Texas. Yes. You manage the district here and New Mexico. Is that what you said? That's what I'm responsible yeah, for. But it's but from a um, overall company size, our market cap is about two and a half billion dollars. We've been around for 34 years. We have, yeah. uh, give or take, one or two offices. Don't quote me on this, but about 85 sales offices across the country wow. in all major cities. Wow. And from the business owner perspective, you you alluded to this a second ago, but when do you know it's a good time to start working with a PEO? It, it really is that pain point, you think? I mean, that's probably when they come to you, but, but right. would you suggest that they f- find you prior to that? Small business owners that we work with are always looking to improve and get better. And they have a getting better agenda is what we call it. So some of the common pain points that cause business owners to reach out to us, um, one that everyone is struggling with is the cost of health care. Mm. And there are certain ways that you can get that. And a PEO offers a platform where you can benefit from economies of scale to be able to build something that not only attracts and retains the right people, but is scalable so it doesn't get out of control for you as you grow the business. So no sense in solving a problem today and having three or four unintended consequences that you can't handle two or three years down the road. So business owners like predictability and they like to manage to something that they have a little bit of foresight on as they go forward. So that might be an example of something that's happening. Maybe in a very tight job market, it's attracting um, and retaining the right people through training and development or ancillary type benefits. Uh, maybe a flexible work schedule, which if you have a small business with employees in different states, there are a lot of different rules and things that you need to navigate. So that might be a reason why a PEO could then step in and help you in all those states. Would you say is the competitive advantage in working with Insperity? Compared to the overall PEOs yeah. across the country? Um, I think our, our CEO and founder, co-founder says it best when he talks about depth breadth, and level of care. So not all PEOs are created uh, the same. Certainly, Insperity is not. We concentrate on what we think is the top 10% of small and medium-sized businesses that have a getting better agenda Mm. that really understand that investing in their people and the type of return they can get from that is what differentiates them. So the level of care that we have and how much service we provide for them. I hear you saying that you resonate well and Sperdy resonates well with people who have a a, let's do this better (laughs) agenda. They're eager to learn. They're they're ready to to take the coaching and the guidance and run with it and they can scale up or you can scale up or down with them. Is there a particular vertical or industry that that we could help you introduce you to or is it really more that attitude for the 
the business owner themselves and size as well? Well, there are certain industries that we are prohibited from doing business oh. with. So maybe I'll start with yeah. that. So things like in the marijuana business because of difficulty to bank those businesses. Mm -hmm. um, things that go subterranean or way up in the sky like rockets or airplanes or things like that or people that have armed guards. Mm -hmm. Because one of the ways we manage risk in a small business in, uh, through healthcare and through worker comp and some of those things is limiting the type of folks that are inside of our pool, right? So we, there, are, there are some businesses are prohibited that we cannot do business with, but otherwise highly educated, highly comp individuals at those companies mm -hmm. that are competing for talent for both attraction and retention to some of the biggest Fortune 100 and Fortune 500 type companies. So those are the ones that are the best fit for us. That's great to know. How tied into, uh, do you, you don't do employee recruitment. We do have a recruiting division. You do? Yes, we do. Matter of fact, as far as it, you were talking a little bit about COVID yeah. recently here, one of the things that we've committed through July of 2021 for all of our clients is that we're going to do drastically reduced or flat fee recruiting access to our complete recruiting department to help them recover and rebuild. So we definitely do that. Included in our platform is recruiting support. So how to write a good job description how to write a proper offer letter, how to set up that employee for success from the beginning all the way through the life cycle um, of, of their career with your company, which is not something that small and medium-sized businesses are particular experts in until they need to be. And, and then oftentimes it comes with such a high price tag. It's a little bit out of their range or a lot out of their range. And if we, if we rely on, uh, you know, the almighty Google search and try to learn ourselves, we're taking ourselves away as small business owners from the tasks that we really ought to be focusing on. So having a partner like you guys makes sense. That's very generous to have that opportunity to help people get back on their feet as we move towards 2021. What is ahead for you guys in, 20, in 2021 in the coming years? Well, historically, we've been a double-digit growth company, and we continue to do that. I think what we've seen through, whether it's Hurricane Harvey or through COVID or whatever type of challenges are out there, the, the level of service in our service team has responded, which I think is a tribute to the culture of what we have at our company. You know, what we espouse and what we help small businesses with are, are best practices that have helped us build from a two-person company to over 3,500 corporate employees. So we're eating what we're cooking every day. So double digit growth. Um, one of the things that our founder had said during the last downturn that he would do differently in the next one is that he would continue hiring. So we've continued to hire and we're growing like crazy. So that's fantastic. And again, pr uh, practicing what you preach. Yes. What did, I don't know if this is what you said. I might've misunderstood you. When you owned your own business, were you an Insperity customer? I was not. Uh -huh. um, I, I had a finance business and I remember back in the day when I was handwriting checks and I would send the information to my accountant and he, he would tell me the tax deposits and how I had to do those things. And I distinctly remember the first day when I had a payroll company, we had real checks and I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm a real business owner now. <laughs> but I would not been exposed to the idea of PEO. But looking back with hindsight being 2020, I absolutely can identify the areas that I could have done better. And you talked a little bit about it where I was spending time on things that were not revenue generating or helping my business or my employees directly. And it's much better to work with a PEO or could be in that case for people who are experts at it. So sometimes when I meet with a new prospect and they say, well, can I get, help me get my head around this? I, I say it's no different than you cutting your grass or hiring someone to cut your grass. You can, kind of, you can cut your grass. <laughs> sure. But then if you're like me, you then have to store the lawnmower. And when the grass is wet and you put the lawnmower from the backyard back in the garage, you have that green trail and your wife is upset about <laughs> that. And then I run out of gas and then the spark plug doesn't work. Then I hurt myself trying to start it. So Not to mention the competition between I have to do the yard work and the football game is on or my kid's playing baseball and I, I can't squeeze it all on the weekend. Also, while trying to think about what I'm going to do next week with my clients as a business owner. Yes. <laughs> highest and best use of your time. And sometimes having us do that and relying on our expertise is a better way to do it. Yeah. What is the greatest compliment a client might share with somebody from the, from the Insperity group? You know, I always say that we have great referenceable clients. And I, and I believe that at some point in our lives, we're going to all run into each other at Costco with our families and our carts. And it's something I never worry about with our clients because I know that we've helped them sleep at night grow their businesses. Um, when issues come up, we're always there for them. 
Um, so I would say the biggest compliment is just helping them sleep at night and be confident that they can get up every day and concentrate on making money instead of getting up every day and worry about where they can cut costs and, and how are they going to be payroll and things like that. Mm-hmm. What do you love to do outside of your work time? Do you have any passions or hobbies? I do play golf as much as I can. Um, my kids are now all out of high school and college and on their way, so I have time to do that where it used to be it was kind of tough to do on the weekends, right, because you were busy with them. Um, I also travel with my wife. Um, she has a similar position as I do with SAP, so um, we're working all the time, and we have the same challenges, and it's almost work 24-7, but it's nice to get away from it and travel with her. And then spending time with my kids that are now young adults and listening to some of the complaints and challenges they're going through. It makes you feel super old, but I'm not old enough to where I can't relate to it. So it's fun to kind of help them through some of the things they're doing. I have two uh, 26 and 24-year-old and a 13-year-old still at home. So I'm still like, you know, (laughs) trying to usher him through. Uh, But it's fun. Both of my kids graduated from ASU uh, in the business school, and they have a very entrepreneur spirit because of their dad and I. And um, my daughter works for Red Bull. She's in Brooklyn, getting ready to come home and be transferred here, hopefully with the same company. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's fascinating to to see their attitudes towards their career and and how they're stepping into that uh, from the perspective of leadership. You spoke to leadership a bit ago. I was an educator growing up. I went to NAU and got my uh, master's degree in organizational development with the hope that maybe I would sidestep out of education and, and have a business of my own, which I've been doing for 15 years now. Uh, but I didn't think like that as a, a 20-something-year-old. Do, are your kids uh, entrepreneurially minded? I don't know if I'd say they're entrepreneurially minded because they were growing up when I had my own business. So I don't know what effect that had on them. So they saw that because it's definitely different working for a big company than it is on your own. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I often tell people who are entrepreneurially minded or they're thinking about, I tell them that when you're an entrepreneur, you have two checkbooks in your head. You have your personal one that we all manage and we kind of understand, but then you have your business one because you're meeting a payroll and you have rent and you've got to pay the phone bill and those things. So it, it has to be something that you're very passionate about. But with my own kids, I think they're still just getting started. Um, I remember when my daughter, who now is working for a pharma company here in town, she was a chemist in, 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 at ASU. It was eye-opening when she got that first paycheck and she saw all the partnerships that that were you know in partnership with her as far as FICA and FUDA and SUDA and Medicare and Social Security. I like the way you've, you've termed that in partnerships. That's the first time I've heard that. <laughs> right. It's so, a healthy way to look at it. Well, I mean, you try to, you know, you get lemons, you want to make lemonade, right? Work time. But it, it is interesting to to have that experience, whether it's entrepreneurial or otherwise, to be able to share that with them and, and sometimes just listen to some of the challenges they're going through. It's interesting. I, of course do a lot of interviews with business owners and everything from the large enterprises all the way down to a mom and pop shop. And I had a more of a business associate and she's become a friend since then, but I reached out to her the other day and uh, she texted me back and said, I'm really struggling. And I said, how can I best support you right now as a friend? And she said, you know, I'm not sure. It's operational stuff. It's a lot of little things, but I'm in over my head. And I said, do you have a time for a call in the next couple of days? I just really wanted to just, you know, how I didn't know if I could solve it for her, but at least just be that person to listen to her. And she said, yes. And so I came back and said, well, do you have time right now? Which is unusual for me because usually I have to schedule it a couple of days out. And um, so I called and she said, yes. And I called her and, and she just started to sob. She runs a very large organization. She's been the founder and CEO. Uh, she manages, I think, 50 employees. And um, this COVID thing has been very difficult. And she's she's one of those lifelong learners. She's aware that she needs to kind of step away from some of the daily things, but she isn't quite sure how to do that. I'm imagining that in spare. And so it was great that I could just say, hey, listen, you know, I can't solve this for you, but I feel you've been there. This will pass, you know, whatever, kind, you know, what can you start taking off your plate? Because she said, and you mentioned this earlier, uh, not sleeping at night. That gets, gets serious when you're running the numbers or you're worried about, you know, the lack of revenue coming in because of the downturn in the economy. And, you know, you have these employees that have families and they rely on you. When when clients are working with your team, uh, I'm willing to bet that they really find that they can sit back and breathe a little bit easier and and have that confidant, that that pal, in a sense, and the expert, right, to talk to and relieve some of that pressure. Is that story that I gave a relatable at all? 
It is. First of all, congratulations that she trusts you enough to yes. come to you with that, right? That's a great compliment um, because it's hard, especially as an entrepreneur with 50 people. You are the man or in this case, the woman, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you alluded to you have 50 employees and spouses and kids and people that rely on you. So you have to get it done. But being a business owner can also be very, very lonely, right? You maybe have a, a lawyer or an accountant and a spouse and, you know, after a certain amount of time, they don't want to hear about it anymore. So we are that dispassionate third party and we can be sometimes a little bit removed versus, versus being that internal employee. And the way our culture is at our company, it's very employer focused and we really concentrate on those things. So again, I wish I could take more credit for it myself. I'm, I'm just, you know, um, you know I, I've been blessed with great leaders at Insperity, but it's really a cultural thing at our company to where we listen to things like that and we want to find out the root of the problem and see if there's a business solution for it. Um, a lot of times a business problem has an HR type solution because we're all just people and that's human capital management. Um, our founder says sometimes um, HR is more difficult than rocket science because rocket science is simple math and HR is people and we're changing all the time. It's dynamic. So so for her to come out and, and say she's really struggling with that, she probably also has the concerns of her people and all the different things that are happening with managing kids at home, right? Yeah. You know, I was at um, – we were with some friends up in Dewey doing a little local wine tour because our Napa one for this young lady's birthday was canceled because of everything that's going on. And it was interesting. They had some kids in the house the next day. We were scheduled to go on our tour. And the kids were in different rooms on their laptops. And I was thinking to myself, it was a little sad because it was like they're little adults. And I heard a little one upstairs doing the Pledge of Allegiance and she was messing it all up. And it was so cute to listen to. But I was thinking to myself, it's too soon for these guys because that's what we do. Yes. Right. We're working remote. We're working home. Um, It's been an adjustment for me because I liked working in the office and I would leave it there and my house was my house. Now it's not. Now it's business central. Mm -hmm. So um, all of those things, I think, are happening to everyone and good for her for reaching out and talking about it. But business owners, they get stuck sometimes in a rut of this is how I've always done it. And this is a, a, a real left turn for them. So so we've been very, very busy, certainly our service team, much more than myself on the business development side. But we talk to clients all the time too and just getting them out. Sometimes it's just going out and having a cigar if that's what they're passionate about or having a meal with them, trying to get them through it. But we'll get through it. We've, we've been through worse. I'm sure we'll get through it. Your point about... And I forgot my train of thought. You had said a second ago that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to grab it while I'm, while I'm talking. It's an emotional and, topic. Yeah, it's okay. It is an emotional <laughs> topic. And I I don't know where I was going to go with that. You had just inspired a story in me uh, around, oh, spouses, right? Mm. So you and your wife, similar roles. And yep. so I'm sure there's opportunity to kind of, you know, sh- celebrate and, and share and, and exchange ideas. And you said a lot of business owners uh, come home and their their circle, their family, their friends uh, may not get what they're going through because they they work at a corporate office. Right. Owning a business is such a, a different beast. And to have Insperity there to say, we get it, we understand, and we're here to guide you through this next piece and, and, and look long-term for you so that your employees are happy, you're doing right by them, you have all the legalities in place, and this business can, can flow and you can focus on what you're good at. That's far different than, you know, again, laying awake at night and, and stressing or showing up to, I think, a BNI meeting or chamber meeting and everybody's putting on their game face right? And, and sometimes not willing to talk about some of the struggles that really weigh us down. Well, another part of our business construct and the way the model works, I think, makes sense in that where these companies dovetail off of our FEIN number. So the advice that we're administrating we're liable for. So I think that creates a connection that business owners understand and they get. That's I a little bit different. I don't know that I understand than, that. Well, you're, you're, you're benefiting from economies of scale when you partner with a PEO like Insperity and the taxes that are due and the quarterly filings and all those things. Not only are we advising on the best practices and the way to do them, but we're filing them and we're responsible for them. When they're on our company health care plan, we are the plan sponsor. So when you're the plan sponsor of that or the retirement services plan, you're the plan sponsor, the way you act as far as managing that, and I'm not saying we're perfect, but I think business owners understand that the advice that that we're giving and how we're leading that way is the better we do, the more money we make. So, And we have risk with them as well. 
Same thing in the way we're compensated. We are a month to month type of an agreement. So if you believe that um, compensation drives behavior, we are motivated by making sure their business is successful because we participate in that success with them. Same thing on our service side. The way our service people are compensated to a great extent is based on retention. And that's connected to taking those phone calls and listening to them. And although we don't share names and specifics of different clients, we can share with a certain business owner the same stories that other business owners, maybe a medical practice is going through frustrations between the front office and the back office, or maybe um, a construction firm is going through the same type of struggles with making sure they can get the right talent on the certain jobs and managing the logistics of their people and what motivates them to do it. So the motivation in employees in different industries sometimes is different. But if they're sharing it with us as that third party and we can motivate and walk them through that, no sense in recreating the wheel, right? Right. So they feel validated that, hey, I'm not the only one suffering from this. And two, hey, there's some applicable things that you can give me now that can help me get over this and get through this. Uh, my studio is sponsored in part by Conscious Capitalism Arizona, and it's really, uh, you know, everything around the four tenants, making sure that all stakeholders are are involved and happy, <laughs> satisfied, finding ways to give back, being servant leaders. It, it really sounds like that's, that's who Insperity is as well. It was interesting you said that because when I first came up here, I read Conscious and I was like, you're thinking versus unconscious. I didn't know what it meant. And I was reading that on the wall when you found me up front. And I, and I understood the service leadership portion. It's a very big part and, and what we talk about in Sparity a lot. And then also the stakeholder piece. Even when we're meeting with prospective clients, there are different stakeholders, whether it's a CFO, they're managing money and risk. An HR person could be either strategic or tactical and have different challenges that he or she is facing. A CEO has a different type of vision on the business. And when we're talking to them, I think we're very careful to make sure that if we're posing different solutions to different issues, we're asking about other stakeholders and how would it, how might it affect them and what are their personalities like so that we can kind of look a couple steps forward to make sure we're solving the right issues and the right problems with them. So um, it's funny you bring that up because I was curious about it. Um, yeah. but, but we are very similar that we're very mission driven. Our mission is to help the business succeed so the community prospers. Um, so that's really our why. Yeah. And the way we do that is by changing behavior, which if you're like me personally and professionally, it's hard to change your behavior, right? You're kind of used to, especially at our age, you're just kind of used to it. Yep. And we do that by taking the payroll burden that, that owners have in a business and trying to get a return on that. So, you know, if you hire someone at $50,000 as an owner, it feels like 65 to them. And ironically to the employee, it feels like 35 to them yeah. after they pay taxes and what right. we talked about earlier. <laughs> So, so how do you motivate them? How do you make sure that they feel like they're being cared for and supported and it's through all of these little things? None of them on its own does it, you know, by itself. And for different employees are different things. But if you can get a return on the things you're investing into your people, it's what we call discretionary effort, which is over and above the minimum to keep your job, which is your job description, right? Which is free labor for employers. So that's what we really try to do. So we're very mission driven in our why and what we're doing and trying to share what we've learned over 34 years with these businesses so that they can be as profitable as possible. I love that. How does a business owner get started with you? You mentioned kind of a discovery session, but for our listeners who are like, I need to know more, is it just a phone call? Is it a, a little form on the website? What, what do you suggest in order for them to engage in the beginning? Depending on where they are in the country, they go to insperity.com and we have internal folks that would then get them out to the business performance advisors in their area. Mm -hmm. um, and then we conduct a discovery call where it used to be we come down and meet in person, now it's Zoom, and I'm an expert at it. I got my background up and all right. those things and so proud of myself. Um, but we're meeting with them, and again, we're, we're finding out where they're at in their business. What is keeping them up at night? What are their frustrations? What are the desired outcomes they're looking for? And then we try to help them understand what their payroll burden is today, and we bring back to them some valuable budgeting and planning tools so they can say, okay, here's what's possible, mm -hmm. and here is – ways that other businesses have done this. And then we just start the discussion that way. And it's just a phone call with yeah. no obligation. It makes 
takes me back to the story I shared about this friend. She had said she had lamented for about a week and was just wanting to reach out to to me and or to didn't really know who to reach out to, but she sat on it for a week. That's a long time to carry that burden. And that clearly people do it for years or even months. Sure. So there's no harm in simply just reaching out to Insperity and just having the conversation. Then you can decide for yourself, right? Everyone on our company knows that we are to help small business owners however we can, whether it's directly or indirectly. So sometimes the result of that meeting is making an introduction to one of our clients or someone that we know, or sometimes it's just having a cup of coffee and talking it through with them and verifying that they're in the right place or it doesn't make sense to make a change at this point. But regardless of what happens, we return to them some data on their folks that they may have never looked at in that form that they can use going forward. So yes, it's as simple as a phone call and a conversation. Great. You mentioned that Insperity is, it continues to grow. Are, so are you currently open to other team members or is that not an area for you? Yeah, it's a, it's a big part of my it job. Is. I'm always looking for people. Okay. So. And, and so tell us a little bit about that. Who are you looking for and, and how does one get involved in the interview or application process? So I would say for us here locally, um, we are going to be adding another team in Phoenix. So we're going to be growing by a minimum another eight to 10 business advisors and then more people on the service side. And we've already got that lease signed and we'll be expanding into that in January. So anybody that has a a passion for small business, maybe they've been a small business owner, so they kind of understand some of those trials and tribulations they go to and can speak to that, or people that are in in business development or maybe have been on the service side, working in some of these disciplines within a large company, um, I would have them definitely reach out to us and, and, uh, you know, we're interviewing constantly for talent to, to have them come in and help, you know, grow our company. Great. It's been a pleasure to get to know you, Don. Tell us where we can find you on the World Wide Web. Uh, well, we are at insperity.com, so you can definitely reach us there. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate to give out phone numbers sure, and things like that. if you're comfortable with that, you bet. Uh, my phone number is 602-290-2900. Probably the easiest cell phone number you'll ever have to remember. <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm pretty much 24-7, so I have people that call me all the time because many times they're reaching out to me when uh, – like you said, your friend is at the end of their rope, and I encourage people to do that. So. It's on top of mind. They're just, yep. they need to get it out right now. So you make, yep. it, you make yourself available for them. That's fantastic. Yep. And LinkedIn as well, LinkedIn.com, Company, Insperity. And we can find you personally, professionally on LinkedIn as well? Yes, you can. All right, great. Anything else I didn't think to ask that is worth mentioning on behalf of the company? Uh, no, I would just say that, you know, you had mentioned a little bit in, in what you're talking about with your friend, and I think a lot of business owners are going through that right now. And I would challenge them that if you are frustrated with any of those business-related pieces, whether it has to do with COVID or the election or anything that's going on, reach out and have a conversation with us. And like I said, whether we help you directly or not, we can connect you with some folks that um, might be able to help you with your your individual issue to help you run better, grow faster, and make more money. Mm. Thank you. And thank you for coming back today. We had a little mix up on time, but I I really appreciate your willingness to come back and make sure that we had a chance to have this conversation today. It was a a very uh, warm and informative conversation. You've been listening to Phoenix Business Radio X, broadcasting live from within the Max 6 Conscious Workspace Studio. Some media leans left, some lean right, and we lean business. Until next time, I'm Karen Nowicki. Thanks for listening. (music) 